Hi and welcome to the Comfy Red Couch. My name is Tracy and I'm your host. And usually at some point in my introduction, I tell you a little bit about the weather. But today I think this episode just might be all about the weather because the weather has gone completely nuts. It's supposed to be spring. Thursday night, Nathaniel and I were walking home from school and it was beautiful and he even said, oh mom, it's just so lovely. We should do this more often. And we were looking at the flowers. There were some crocuses and I actually saw my first snowdrops. I've never noticed them before. And there are little snowdrops in people's gardens on the way home from Nathaniel's school. So it was a lovely walk on Thursday. It was, you know, we still had the winter jacket on, but it was getting to the point where, you know, you were starting to think about maybe being able to take it off for spring. And then yesterday, it snowed. And it snowed. And it iced. And it snowed. And today, it is still icing and snowing. And it looks very white outside, which is not normal for mid-April. So that is the weather in Toronto. Just crazy, crazy weather. <sighs> very, very strange. Oftentimes in April, and usually before the 10th of April, you'll wake up and there is a light layer of snow just resting on the lawns. And you think to yourself when you wake up, Ugh, I don't want to go out in that. But you know it's not going to be that bad because by noon it will have melted and you'll move on to April showers and May flowers and all those beautiful blossoms that spring has to offer. I look out the window today and I think, no, it's not going to be cleared up by noon today. It's not going to be cleared up by noon tomorrow. Maybe by Friday. Crossing fingers. I do have a theory though. And um, I think Isaac is starting to believe me. When I first told him my theory, he just laughed and said, yeah, whatever, mom. But now he's starting to agree with me. And it has to do with the fact that Canada is legalizing marijuana. And I think that Mother Nature has gotten into a little bit of some funny stuff. She's got a stash and it is not a yarn stash as far as I'm concerned. So that's what I think is going on is Mother Nature has just gone a little bit crazy and maybe she needs to be getting into yarn and not other things because this weather that we've been having all around the world, it is crazy. I have expounded about the weather far too long, so now it is time to move on. As I mentioned earlier in the podcast, my name is Tracy. You can find me as Tracy RR on Ravelry and I am Comfy Red Couch on Instagram. If you are new to the podcast, welcome. I hope that you have a nice warm cup of tea or coffee, or if you are in a warmer climate, something nice and cool to drink. And I hope that you've got a nice project to work on while you join me on the couch and we chatter about lovely knitting and crafting and things like that. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. You know I always love having you here with me each week. And I also know you know the drill. You've already got your beverage, you've got your project of choice, and you've already claimed your spot on the comfy red couch, probably given Scout a pat or two while you joined me, and you are ready to start talking about knitting and all those lovely things. So let's start off with some tea time because that is always the best way to start a nice chat about knitting and lovely crafty goodness. Today, I am drinking out of my David's mug. I looked out the window, saw snow, and thought this was the perfect mug. And the fox turns white when hot liquid goes in, so it is still warm tea at this moment. I'm going to put it down for a moment while I tell you about what I am drinking. And today, I am drinking the Tea Palace Organic Lavender Grey, and my tin is nice and dented. And I was getting a little bit low. And this is one of my favorite teas. It, as I said, it's getting low. It is Earl Grey tea. And there are little bits of lavender. I think I've shown this one on the podcast before. And there's little pieces of, I think it's orange in there as well. It might be lemon. But um, just a peel. And I do love this one. But I was getting so low that I needed to make an order at the Tea Palace. So... Not this past week, the week before, I put an order in 
it actually, I think I put it in on Wednesday and Friday, I had a slip from the uh, delivery company that it was already here. So two days to deliver, which was amazing. Problem is there were taxes on it, so I actually did not get it until Monday. And, uh, but I got a lot of tea, which was good. And cause if you're going to order from a British tea shop, you might as well order everything that you love. And the reason I ordered in the first place was because my favorite eucalyptus zest, which is a rooibos tea, was back in stock. And the Tea Palace had discontinued it there for a little bit, then they got some more, and as soon as I saw it was back in stock, I needed to get a couple of these, because this one is one of my absolute favorite teas, even though it doesn't have caffeine in it. And I've talked about this one many times. This is the one that I had when we went to the Orangerie at Kensington Palace with a little bit of lemon and maybe a cube or two of sugar in, in there if you like that, or even on its own, it's a lovely, lovely tea. So when I saw they had that back in stock, I thought I definitely need to get more. And then of course I looked at my lavender gray and it was low. So I picked up some more organic lavender gray and I just got the refill because I already have the tin. And for a few of them, I already have the tin, so I saved a little bit. One of the other teas I picked up, I did pick up in the tin, and this is the Sapphire Jubilee Blend. And when it arrives, it comes in a cello pack, and you can see there is black tea, there are cornflower petals, and there's also bergamot in here, so it's a bit of an Earl Grayish flavor to it, although I can't smell it through the cello bag. And so that was one of the ones that I wanted because they do often make beautiful anniversary blends. I did buy some other teas as well. Some of them I had already tried before and I really liked them and I was low, such as the organic rose gray. And I already have a tin that I'll put this in. And I also have queen of berries. And this one is a nice one. This one is sort of popped open. Black tea with lots of little pieces of berry in it, and it's a really lovely tea as well. So when you buy these containers, there is just a little cello pack inside, but they are very, very well packed, which is good. While I did stick with teas for the most part that I knew and I loved, I also decided I would try a couple of other ones, and this one looked quite fun. This is a limited edition one, and it is Mezella de los Muertos. I think it was for Mardi Gras, a special tea. I could be wrong there. But it's got marigold petals in it. I haven't opened it yet, but I'm looking forward to trying this one. And just, I love the little logo on there. And then I also, and I think they're starting to change the packaging up a little bit because they've used cello packs. This is the Golden Age Tea. It's got some roses in there. And this is Ceylon and Rose as well. I was just in a rosy mode and I needed lots of rose teas. I don't know why I was feeling that I just sort of needed that lovely fragrance of rose. So I ordered a few teas that had that, including my organic rose gray. I don't order from the Tea Palace a lot because I usually get hit with a nasty duty tax. But when I saw the eucalyptus zest was back in stock, I just had to get more because my stash of eucalyptus zest was getting quite low, as was my lavender gray. So I decided, okay, let's order some tea. And I really, really love the Tea Palace tea. So let me grab my tea for today, which is the organic lavender gray, which I love, 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 love. And let's say cheers and start talking about knitting. Cheers. I actually don't have a lot to share with you on my favorite things this week. The sweater that I started last week, my Knit Me Baby One More Time, it's in the exact same position it was last week. A little tiny bit of knitting on the needle and it didn't get touched at all. I did get a tiny bit of work done on my big puppy socks and these are socks that I am making for my big puppy Isaac because he has really, really huge feet. And last week I talked about trying to match up the socks. They won't match right at the top, but from the bottom down. So 
I was in one of the stripes up here. I am now in the heel flap and I did knit down to the dark turquoise and I've now started my heel flap and it's pretty much now matched up. And that's all I got done on my big puppy socks. So not a lot, but that's because I was spending the rest of my week working on mystery knitting. And one of the mystery knitting things that I'm going to talk about this week is in this gorgeous little pink star bag from So Ray Me. And I either cast this on on International Day of Pink or the night before because I was taking it with me to the International Day of Pink. And um, so there is a lovely secret project in here. Ironically, it is not pink yarn, but it is a lovely, lovely pink bag. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to share this with you in the next couple of weeks. I think you are going to love this when you see it. I know I do. The last project that I am going to talk about this week, and of course I still can't share it yet next week, is in my I solemnly swear that I am up to no good, but I am going to do a spoiler alert because I'm going to post some photographs of Clue 3. So spoiler alert, spoiler alert, if you do not want to see Clue 3 and any of the clues that were leading up to Clue 3, run screaming out of the room, go make yourself another cup of tea, do what you have to do, just cover your eyes, cover your ears. I am going to share photos of Clue 3 now. So in Clue 3, the green, purple, and the variegated thistle are looking absolutely beautiful together. I am loving how they have come together and I really enjoyed working with the Nora George Merino Silk again. I have used it before and it is a lovely, lovely yarn to work with. And Tracy has done her dyeing magic with them as she always does. I did do a slight change to the pattern in the last eyelet row. I have a thing about symmetry, so Helen knows I've done this. I like things to line up, so I actually have an extra knit one at the beginning of the row of last eyelets and then at the end where it says you get to the last seven you get to the last six because I like things to line up and I knew it would have driven me crazy so I did make that change and of course Helen knows I made that change but um, it's just my own little symmetry thing that I have that I get a little bit weird about Anyway, so that is the progress so far on the Impressionist Mystery Knit Along. The final clue drops next Saturday. I'm very excited that next week I will be able to share the fully blocked shawl with you. Of course, it will be in full spoiler alert because not everybody wants to see what it looks like at this point. So they may want to finish their clue for and get it blocked out before they see what it actually looks like. But I'll do my little spoiler alert and I will share the fully blocked shawl with you next week. A quick note about next week though, I am going to a birthday party Sunday which is usually my podcasting day and I won't be home so I will likely podcast on Monday because I have a day off Monday. So there will be a podcast next week, it just might go up a little bit later than it normally does unless I can get myself up really really early Sunday morning to podcast and then stay up really, really late Sunday night to do my editing. We will see. It will all unfold as it unfolds. Anyway, for this week, that is all I have to share on my favorite things, and it really wasn't very much, was it? Lots of mysteries. It is now time for some brown paper packages, and even though I shared a lot of tea with you, in tea time that I got in a yellow cardboard box. I'm going to share a little bit of yarny goodness that I received this week from Sweet Sparrow Yarns. And I ordered this lovely skein of Robin's Egg. And I was thinking to myself, I have made a lot of Pebble Beach shawls for other people and I've talked about making a Pebble Beach shawl for myself. I just haven't got around to it. And when I looked at this skein, I thought, 
This is going to be a pebble beach shawl for me. And I know it's a very similar color way to the Blackbird Nest that I got from Elm Tree Yarns. I've got two skeins of that. I've got a sparkle one and I've got a regular sock. The regular uh, sock Blackbird Nest with the lovely little mini, those are going to be socks. And then the sparkle one is going to be matched with a beautiful pink from Hedgerow Yarns and made into a brioche shawl. And this is going to become a pebble beach shawl just for me. So lots of lovely aquas in my future. The next thing that I am going to share also from Sweet Sparrow Yarns is this gorgeous, gorgeous sweater bag. And I saw the fabric online. There was a white with this floral pattern and then there was the black with this floral pattern. And I loved how the flowers just jumped off of the fabrics and the white was gorgeous, but I was a little bit afraid with white it would get really, really dirty. Black, I'll probably get cat and dog hair all over it, but there are lint rollers, easy to clean up. But I just thought this fabric was just amazing. I would love to find this fabric and make a dress out of it because I just think it is perfect, perfect, perfect. It has a pink leather handle on it and it is a drawstring as well so a huge size I may find that my knit me baby one more time I've got it in my smaller Alice in Wonderland bag that Christine made me for a swap which I love but I don't think knit me baby one more time is going to fit in there with all of the yarn so what I might do is put the extra yarn that I'm not using in this bag for now and then I will knit out of my Alice in Wonderland bag and keep the sweater and then the current ball of yarn that I'm using there and of course the knitting needles and the pattern and then if and when it gets too big it may have to move but I think I'm going to use two project bags because I really want to use the Alice in Wonderland bag for that but this is a much bigger bag to hold the excess so it is just beautiful, beautiful fabric, and I couldn't resist. I just couldn't resist. Now, I was thinking that there may be some weeks ahead where I don't have some brown paper packages. I do still have, I'm still subscribed to some clubs, so I've got my Nora George clubs for the Mrs. Weasley's Knit Club, and I also have the Great Characters of Literature and the Mini Club that I have pre-purchased, and I also have some Scrumptious Pearl colorways, the Disney collection that will be coming as part of my club there. But I am really trying to cut back on some of the purchases that I have been making because I'm running out of room in my house and I also have to put a roof on my house. So um, we've got to replace the roof. I got to cut back a little bit on my lovely, lovely yarny purchases. Plus I need to start knitting more instead of shopping. Anyway, what I thought I would do in weeks that I don't have a brown paper packages segment, I'm going to have a Tracy's Treasures segment. And that is where I will go and find something wonderful in my lovely, lovely stash, because I do have a lovely, lovely stash. And I will bring out pieces of wonderfulness that I will share, maybe a little bit about why I purchased it, or a little bit about the memory of, of of it or whatever it is that I want to share about that piece. I thought that might be a fun little segment to have. So look forward to some Tracy's treasures ahead. But for today, it's brown paper packages. And even though there wasn't a lot to share, that was probably enough. It's now time for some bits and bobs, and this is my segment where I talk about things that aren't necessarily knitting related. And it was, as always, and it always is going to be around here, a busy, busy week. And of course, as soon as I start talking about bits and bobs, all the busy stuff that happened just goes out of my brain. But I do remember a few things that happened this week. Monday and Tuesday were great days at work. I got lots done. And then Wednesday was International Day of Pink. And on my Instagram feed, there is a picture of me with these beautiful angel wings that one of my coworkers put up. And he had people write down anti-bullying sayings on one side of the feather, and then he 
put the feathers into wings so they're like angel wings and my lovely co-worker this is the co-worker that during my vlogmas I was hanging Christmas bulbs on my oak tree outside and he drove by and then the next day said to me I saw you hanging your balls on the weekend um, he's funny that way this is the same co-worker and he put just this beautiful beautiful display of wings up for International Day of Pink which is an anti-bullying day and we took some photos so that was fun and I put those on my Instagram feed and I also had an opportunity to go to an event that was held and I met the mayor of Toronto and that's Mayor John Tory as compared to the other infamous mayor that Toronto used to have. Um, I had a lovely little chat with him and he used to have a radio show that I used to listen to on talk radio and I was telling him that I actually missed him on the radio because he was a very good talk radio host and uh, just a, a very short but lovely conversation with him. So that was one of the highlights of my week. And Isaac is working away on his musical at school. He is building the set. So Friday night he stayed late and he's all excited about all of the building he's been doing for the set. And then Saturday, which was yesterday, he had a full day rehearsal. And he is, I think, going to be a parent and one of the sergeants. And he had to get his costume this week. So Greg went to the Army uh, Surplus store and bought him some, they were Eddie Bauer pants that he got for $20. I think they're new. And so when he went in, they were very pleased with his army outfit. They thought it was really great. However, they thought that his hippie outfit, because they're doing hair, was not so good. And on Friday night, he kept coming downstairs and saying, is this a good hippie outfit? And he had the rainbow cowl that he and Nathaniel had co-knit. And that looked good. But I said, you just sort of look like you're from the 80s with what he was wearing. And he kept coming down. He'd have the little bit of rainbow, but then he... He just looked like he was finding an outfit from the 80s. So definitely not the hippie look. And then when he got to school yesterday, apparently they were making fun of him because he had worn his jeans and he had rolled them up. He doesn't own bell bottoms. And they said to him, he looked like he was wearing mom jeans. And they were his own jeans. They weren't my jeans. They were his. And so he said, yeah, but I rocked those mom jeans, mom. So <laughs> that made me laugh. And, um... So I'm not sure how we're going to get him to get hippie jeans when he's got mom jeans. <sighs> but that was kind of fun with him. Nathaniel, again, always singing all of the Wizard of Oz theme songs. And he loves the little the bit with the coroner. Um, as coroner, I must confirm, he has been singing that ad nauseum little section about the corner. <sighs> I've had enough. I've fallen in, I must have I fell in the mentor, and she's not only nearly dead, she's nearly in most sense only dead. <laughs> Anyway, um, but it is nice to hear the music around the house. We represent the Lollipop Guild, the Lollipop Guild, the Lollipop Guild, and in the name of the Lollipop Guild, we welcome you to Munchkin Land. I have mentioned on the podcast before that Greg has been taking a Latin course at the University of Toronto and he has been enjoying that a lot. It is Mondays and Wednesdays and I think he just had his last class last week and he is about to go into the exam next Monday so he's all worried and all in study mode. He'll do fine but um, he has enjoyed taking the course for sure. I'm not sure whether he will continue. He still hasn't read those Harry Potter books that I bought him in Latin for Christmas. That's what I think he should do over the summer. 
I think though for this week I have covered everything that I need to for bits and bobs. As I said, sometimes you know the week goes by so quickly and those are some of the highlights and I think that's all I've got to share this week on bits and bobs. Thank you so much for joining me on the comfy red couch this week. I just realized I forgot the red blanket again. But every week there is some sort of representation of red on the couch. There is the quilt that Scout lies on when she lies behind me, although you don't usually see it. During the week, it's actually on the entire couch. I lay the quilt out so that it doesn't get dirty because it's a white couch, but oh well. I'm not gonna refilm the podcast. I'm not gonna stress about it. Hopefully next week I remember, but if I don't, it is not the end of the world. Anyway, I thank you so much for joining me on the podcast this week. I hope that you've had a chance to, even though it was a very short time together, sit down, relax, get some knitting, crocheting, rug hooking, weaving, whatever it is you're doing, spinning. And um, next week, I am excited to share the Impressionist Mystery Knit Along, the full blocked shawl with you. I'm not sure whether I will be able to share what is in this or not, hopefully soon, but otherwise that's all I've got for this week and I wish you a wonderful week ahead. Take time to breathe. <sighs> Hope that the snow melts and I'll see you next week on the Comfy Red Couch. Bye. April 15th, 2018. What is this? The raccoons are going to go back into hibernation. I think I should too. Ugh. <laughs>